Maths. It's a subject that's fascinated humans for millennia. It is often considered to be the language of the universe, the ultimate science. Yet, it tends to be a mystery for most people. What makes it such a difficult subject to study? Is it actually a science? And what sort of career could you possibly make out of it? Joining us today to answer these questions is Dr. Anish Ghosh, recipient of the Shanti Swaroop Bhatnagar Award for his research in pure mathematics. Let's get started. What does it mean to be a mathematician? Could you talk a bit about your specialization? Certainly. So I'm a pure mathematician. Uh, I work in a subject called ergodic theory. It loosely translates to the study of chaotic systems. There was a famous Austrian physicist called uh, Ludwig Boltzmann. And Boltzmann was trying to predict the motion of gas molecules in, say, a closed room. Uh, To understand the physical phenomena using mathematics, there is a two-step process. First, you need to model it, and then you need to mathematically solve the model. Now, the problem with a complicated system like a gas molecule is that it's very hard to uh, accurately predict what's going on. So the modeling is very difficult. So put another way, uh, the molecule's motion is very sensitive to initial conditions. What they did was postulate or formulate something called an ergodic hypothesis. Okay, And what it says is the following. It says that I can't predict the motion of this gas molecule very precisely. However, if you ask me, okay, that's fine, it's a difficult question, can you tell me something about the long-term behavior of the gas molecule? Like over a longer period of time, if you look at its orbit, can you tell me something about this orbit? For instance, uh, you know, there's, uh, we, you and I, we are both in two different rooms and there's oxygen in the room, right? It's constantly moving around, right? So it might happen just as a thought experiment that all the oxygen in your room decides to concentrate itself in one corner of the room, right? It's possible that there's no oxygen anywhere except for that corner. The reason it doesn't happen is part of this ergodic hypothesis which states that over time, over long periods of time, these gas molecules tend to distribute evenly in the space that they occupy. Where do we actually use it in real life? What could be the practical applications of a subject like this? The kind of work that I do is kind of a blue skies work, which is to say that you try to do something which is interesting and uh, difficult. And uh, the faith that most of us scientists have, and I certainly do, is that uh, if it's good work, it will find an application, right? So having said that, um, some of this work is getting applied in quantum computing. But you know, I have to be honest with you, the, the work that, we, that I conduct is, uh, the motivation is purely intellectual. Were these subjects you were always interested in from a young age, or did you start off looking towards a different career, but then somewhere down the line ended up pursuing mathematics? my favorite subjects were maths and physics and so I decided I would do maths and physics and I continued doing maths and physics till the second year of my undergraduate studies in St. Xavier's and at that point I had to decide and it was a tough decision to make but there were uh, two factors which kind of helped me choose. The first one was that sometimes in they tell you they give you a problem in physics and there are a lot of uh, assumptions. And so uh, if you're a physicist, you have to look at a real world situation, make these assumptions, go ahead and solve it. I want everything written down. (laughs) All the I's have to be dotted and the T's have to be crossed and then only am I willing to proceed. So you can't do physics like that. You have to take some uh, leaps of faith which I wasn't willing to do. Second thing is that I started, uh, I was fortunate to have very good teachers. So they realized that I was uh, better than average at mathematics and sent me to the 
to TIFR. So I got a lot of my first serious exposure to mathematics from the TIFR when I was an undergraduate. So Still, there are so many people who believe that math isn't a science. You know, right. a lot of my friends have said that math is just, you know, a different subject. It's used in science, but it's not a science. Right. How would you, um, how would you respond to that? Some people say it's an art and they have a point. Some people say it's science. The mystery is that somehow some kind of system which human beings seem to have developed can actually describe the universe. If you start off looking at mathematics as purely an intellectual creation of man, then perhaps uh, you, know, it's, you can make a case that it's not science as such. But if you take two things into uh, account, first, that a lot of the development of mathematics was precipitated by the other sciences, by the need to model things. I'm happy to call it either an art or a science because you know that makes me either an artist or a scientist and I'm happy with both <laughs> you mentioned that you know science uh, maths can be a difficult subject for a lot of people yes. why do you think that's the case why is it such a difficult subject for students the most important thing is somehow that um, it has to be presented properly right? so this is an important thing and uh, because Maths has one serious uh, feature. In other subjects, you know, you have theories and then the theories get replaced with new, more accurate theories. But in maths, nothing gets replaced. It just gets built on top of it, right? So, you know, starting from the Greeks through Newton and up to this present age, one uh, a child has to study all of that in some in a few years in school so it's a lot of material to go through right it's a lot of material and it's a challenge uh, for anybody to present that material and also for the child to absorb the material a problem that we face in schools a lot of the maths education in schools is a little bit uh, unmotivated shall we say and so when a young person like yourself uh, wants to study math, it's not clear whether uh, enough justice has been done in the school system. It needs very, very sensitive handling. It's up to us scientists to try to make it more, more fun and make the path through the science a little easier. Right? But I feel that uh, there's anyway too much stuff being taught. Right. You know, kids nowadays are studying God knows how many hours. It's crazy. <laughs> right. So you can't expect someone to have to work that hard and be super interested all the time about every single thing. At some point, it's going to give way. So as a society, we need to find some way of making this school experience a little more relaxed. Exactly. Um, it's really great to know that there are people who are thinking that way. So you, you spoke about in the beginning about your uh, specialization in maths being more theoretical. How would you actually differentiate between the theoretical math and the application-based math? And which do you think has more potential in the future? Let me answer the second question first. Both of them have a lot of potential. Right? I'm very open-minded about uh, problems. Now, the main difference between theoretical and applied math is the source of the problem. In my case, the source of the problem is a purely intellectual. Applied math has a real life physical origins. And this division uh, is used to be less uh, you know, stark a few hundred years ago. But I like to keep an open mind. So I'm interested if someone, if there's a good applied math problem which I think I could make a serious contribution to, I'm very open to trying. Now, speaking purely from the perspective of a student who wants to pursue these subjects in the future, yeah. um, there's a lot of controversy, you can say, about whether you should really get into science and maths if you want to make a, if you want to make a lot of money or if you want to be very right. rich. Right. Now, I will, I'll break this question up. Firstly, why do you think that's the case? And right. How true is that? 
that's a good question. So it is true, it is true that the average scientist or the average professor is not going to be rich. That's just a fact, right? So if uh, you, if money motivates you and there's nothing wrong with it, it's absolutely fine, then this is not, probably not the right career choice. That's not to say that there aren't people who study, uh, become scientists and become wealthy, but the average person does not. So that's true. I think uh, it's, uh, it's just a fact. So one of the reasons it's a fact is because, uh, you know, if you want to be rich, you're either born rich or you find something nice to sell, which everybody likes and buys. And the fact is no one wants to buy a theorem. So, I can't sell it. <laughs> so it's hard to be rich. Um, there are a lot of mathematicians and physicists and all who turn to industry. And if you do that, you can become wealthy. You have to kind of ask yourself, well, look, if I uh, can get to do what I like doing, which is scribbling on a blackboard and lead a middle-class life, if that's good enough for you, then you should do it. But if you are motivated by money, then there are better ways of, of getting to your goal. Right? Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to students who want to pursue mathematics? There are a lot of nice programs around the country, right? So at the school level and also at the undergraduate level. So that in these programs, we try to give a taste of what uh, higher mathematics is like. And so once you go through one of these, you can better answer the question, is this for me or not? Right? And... Uh, the most important thing I think is to see that, you know, is to have fun doing it, right? So if you have to spend your whole life doing something, it better be fun. Otherwise your whole life is going to be a long dragged out misery, right? That's not nice. So uh, ask yourself, am I having fun doing this some or not? If you're not, then it's fine. Do something else that you find interesting and worthwhile. But if you are, then uh, go to one of these programs, reach out to us. We're always here to help. This is Science Teens, where we meet experts and ask questions that can help you make the right study and career decisions in the sciences. I do this as a fellow student, and your support through a like and subscription will give me and everyone contributing to this channel a lot of encouragement.